Welcome to the channel, Every Results, where we play a different deck list every video. Today we're playing Mono White Mid Range. Guys, this is heavily inspired by Putin's mid range list, so uh, we'll definitely leave a link in the description below for that. But without further ado, let's hop into this deck list so you guys get some gameplay. Have a great weekend. We'll see you here in just a second. <laughs> All right, guys, so here is the deck list where it's at right now. You're going to see different iterations of this deck as you're going through the various gameplays. You're going to see all kinds of evolution going on. So that's just ideas that you can put in the deck that I've been trying. But right now, this is where I'm stuck at. It's been working really well. I'm not going to go over the whole deck. I'll put the deck list below. There's a ton of gameplay coming up. And if you really want me to discuss the deck list, then I will definitely cover it at the end of the video on the outro. And I will show you Putin's original list first. And then we'll go into this description and how I utilize everything and kind of what's going on through my thought process while we're playing the games and stuff, if that's something you're interested in. But without further ado, let's get you some really long gameplay. You guys have a great weekend. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you would, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, free ways to help out. And until the end, stay safe, be happy and healthy. Peace. We'll see you guys. All right, we go first. I don't love this, but I don't hate it because we can start to curve out. We got a little bit of removal. Yeah, we'll keep. We got an E-motor. We're just gonna mute them out. Mm. Let's go ahead and drop. Hopefully we pull into another land here. Sure. Um. Let's see. Let's go with wedding announcement for right now. Maybe the wrong call. Definitely block up one here. There we go. Alright, so let's go here. Here. Pass. We'll use blockers. We gotta get uh we're definitely gonna have to get Wandering Emperor in here. Okay. So up squeeze dude mm. yeah that may have taken it too close may have taken it too close but we're gonna go ahead and go with that um Go ahead and drop here. Go with one kicker. No attacks. Now we can block up and farmhand brings us a land. Okay. Okay. Good 
good turn for him. You go ahead and let this roll through. Sure. Should do it for him. I'm not overconfident. You're just underwhelmed. My judgment is fine. All right, GGS. <laughs> this deck's a beast, man. It's just a matter of getting to that, you know, fifth or sixth turn where you can start overpowering it. You just gotta push it off until then. But yeah. It's mono black, mono red. GG's. This month's Patreon Rewards features the amazing tutor pack with some of the most powerful tutors in Magic's history. If you'd like to learn more or sign up today, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, we go first. Uh, Yeah, we'll keep it. So they're going to burn out that one. Okay. Drop in Peacekeeper, see what they got going on. Uh, Ronin. Yeah, well, let's tax the Ronin. No blocks. Okay, so go plus one here, plus one here. Do this together. 
go there. Let's see. Let's go ahead and drop this one in. Grab that. We'll actually play that one. Yeah, we'll play that one. GG's girl. GG's. <laughs> okay, we go first. Uh, yeah, we'll keep. We'll keep. Hopefully, we get an untapped land on a draw. I think we'll use Iganjo. Gives us a couple chances to get an untapped land. If we don't have an untapped land on the next turn, we're fine because we don't have a two drop. those okay let's go ahead and take a peek see what they got so let's mess up me hook massacre for a while Infernal Grasp. Take that. Drop it in. Definitely. Pop. Okay. So I'm guessing either shield or fable. Alright, so fable. They're not getting their land drops.
Hmm. Okay, so they got another shield rig, maybe. Guessing another shield, dude. You hope for one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess that's what you want. Definitely take you off the invoke. Definitely take you off the invoke, Justice Listley. Sure. Remember your training. How we greet our enemies. Mm. That's tasty. I don't know where they're going with this. Are they going to start making tenacious underdogs? Oh, they, want to, they want to discard some when cards? I win, or sacrifice some creatures? You know about the Raven <laughs> oh. Okay.
sure. Let's go plus one here. Let's go ahead and drop this one in. Let's go ahead and plus one here. And I will be brave. We have a flying. to block up but we got to be careful because of meat hook massacre oh my god I don't know we only lose three points here so if they attack in all we could actually just die nah it'd be two points so we do actually have to kill shieldred on this attack If they decide to do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. They got us. Oh. Because we gain life too from the death. Yeah. Should be fine. If not, that's fine. Mass for blockers. Okay, so yeah, Shieldred going was a must. Um. There we go. I have got new moves to teach you. Looks good. Looks good. GG's man. Woo. <laughs> that was close. GG's. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep this. Mono black's coming. No. 
not worried about my own life. So they've either got cut down or infernal grasp. Man, that's fine. This happens regardless of what they do with that. Sure. Tradesies. We'll do tradesies. Hell yeah, we'll do tradesies. Let's go. Let's go. Um, let's go here. This way we can exile with the Emperor to get rid of Tenacious Underdog. And then we've still got Faithful Absence, depending on whether they've got Liliana or Soren or Shield. Yes, yeah, so, so. Under my watch, I would like to hit Soren and get enough land out to farewell. But we're not going to be able to farewell to get that so. It's just going to be what it is. Uh, yeah, we'll discard. Um, yeah, let's ramp a little bit so in case this gets out of control. So, with that thought, let's go ahead and go here. Go ahead and get another planes. Uh, they've got mana shut down, so they can't really spend the token now. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. May never be restored now. They might have me hook, but okay. We're in a position now where we can fare well, so hopefully we, they've got Shieldred. They're gonna Shieldred or not. That's my idea. Huh. So they do have cut down. I guess we can do Archangel. Go ahead and put two to the face, gain some life. If they've got cut down, they're definitely going to want me to block the Tenacious Underdog with the Angel. And then they can cut down afterwards. We gain the life off of it, though. I would probably actually block up the Bat. Or the Vampire, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> the Bat. I'll block up Batman. You block up Rocky Balboa. And we'll see which one gets cut down. Could let him go through and drop in Wandering Emperor on the next one. Nah, they've got some kind of removal they want to use. So let's go here and here. Which is fine. We've got the Emperor. Even if they remove before we gain the life, we've got another Archangel on hand and we've got the Emperor. So one way or another, we're getting rid of shit. So meat hook for two. Yeah, meat hook for two. Right on. 
Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Hopefully Paragon lives for one more turn. I'd like to get my restoration of a ganjo. And do something with it. We get restoration of a ganjo out, then on the next one we can farewell enchantments in graveyard. We don't have to worry about this shit. Mm. I think we're gonna wait and uh Exile is underdog. He's got to see it coming. Got to see it coming. If not, it's going to be a beautiful thing. Oh yeah, even better that they do that now than later. I think so. I think we do. Definitely think we do. Heck yeah. All in on that mug. I'm guessing they probably got the hook again. So that's, that's kind of wild. We're moving here. Uh, we'll remove one here. Go ahead and drop it in here. I would like them to turn that sleeper sideways and we will drop in. They don't have another meat hood. We'll drop another 2 2 with that Emperor and exile that sleep. Do it, buddy. Keep going, man. You gotta have an invoked despair in there somewhere, right? No Liliana's yet. No more meat hook massacres. Not sure what's going on. Get 
their other one. Right on. They got their other one. Hmm. Yeah, we'll block. It's fine. It's fine. Two or less. We don't have anything, so we'll decline. Put this in play. Go ahead and minus this one. <laughs> Try not to miss you. Keep watch for intruders. We'll exile with this one. Of a We're gonna go beast mode with that one. Good plan. I mean, if they got a meat hook, I mean, you know, they can do it, but they apparently don't, so that's fine. You're gonna make me sacrifice a creature? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Must be made. Sounds good. Show them how we greet our enemies. I'm not interested in dying today. All right, GG's mono black, GG's. All right, we go first. Okay, we go first. Yeah, we'll definitely keep, we'll keep. So far, it's just Azorius. Hopefully, oh, it's not that Esper shit. Oh my god, man. Esper's just painful. Attacking. No? Okay. Damn. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and drop here. So they're not running depopulate. I would suck. I mean, we're in a good spot for it, but still suck. I 
if they can counter this, that sucks. But if they do, we got to push it out of their hand anyways, right? Okay. Make disappear and sack your own dude to make sure I don't get one or never on the bill. Secapate. Secapate's pretty good. That's fine. We've got a reason to play Sarah Paragon now. And we know they play Syncopate. So, guess we gotta see if they got Syncopate. For three. Or a hard counter. Maybe devious cover up. Dissipate. Don't count for my guys. Use up your other syncopate. Not targeting. Doesn't target, just allows. Get for hurting my people. It's a good one. Syncopate for one. They've got a bounce spell. That works. I'm never done so good. May your blade strike true. Okay. So it gives them three. If they're holding the gate, man, it stops Restoration of Ganjo. We won't play it out. <laughs> Until after they make their move here. But at three, Emperor's not the call. game for you. Now if they got any gate, it does stop restoration of a ganjo and that sucks. But this is what it is. Well, didn't stop it. We thin out. Hopefully all they have is something like Emperor to exile Warden. They gain two life. We put through six. That's it.
Are they gonna rope? Don't rope. Just play it out. Sure. Okay. Alright, GG's. Good game. Alright, we go first. Yeah, we're definitely keeping this. Yeah, we'll keep. 100%. Oh yeah, yeah, we're keeping all right. So Esper, oh yeah, okay. Get this out ahead of Esper, that would be great. Take a peek at their hand, oof, so nice. Let me see what you got, Esper. Void Rand, Underdog, Reckoner. Take your void rounds. Play out your underdog. Oh, you're gonna go bank buster? Okay. No sweat, buddy. No sweat. Still can't do them void rings. Cool. Sure. See if the fire bank buster with it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Do it, do it, do it. Do it. Do it. That sucks. Nah. Underdog. That was a lot of stuff, man. That was a lot of stuff. Um. Whew. Okay. <clears throat> All right, we'll hold. Let them come in with Rafine and what's her name? thing that is a thing so now we'll probably need to go ahead and pop the farewell i mean we got two of them we got sierra paragon and wedding announcement so let's go ahead and kill off our creatures here oh really
should be reading wipe. If not, that's on you. so Paragon can get him back. I don't think they're using their graveyard. work because we could drop in peacekeeper call void rend oh go void rend before we drop in peacekeeper and then we can do no won't work hmm let's go ahead and call out uh let's go ahead and call out the void rend Mm. Make disappears if you want to. Now they can void rain. Yeah, they can even do faithful absence. What do we got in here? We got anointed peacekeeper, restoration of a god joy, and spirit of companion. Yeah, man. These are all nice. Not holding the Emperor. My turn. Every job is an 
opportunity to learn more about this city. Let's do this together. Gotta block it up, buddy. I mean, if you got Emperor, you're good to go. You do have Void Rune. I mean, you might have more Void Rune. All right, <laughs> GG's. Guess not. We need more. Voidrin. Esper. Come on, Esper. Do better. You're going to be Esper. Be Esper. Be the control freaks you are. All right, we go first. Definitely keeping this. This is an amazing open hand. Yeah, we'll go. So if they kill it off, we can get it back with the restoration of the ganjo. I'm not worried about it. Hell, they can even attack into it. I'm fine with it. Hmm, so they got Graveyard Trespasser. That's fine. Oh, we don't have the real trespass. Hmm. Okay. They should know what's coming. This way we can get rid of uh, Underdog. If they get big labs and so it's fine. Run away. You'll be safe. <laughs> you are not much of a roadblock. Go here. We're gonna go here and take a look at what they got. I don't like Rafine. I don't like Ao. So I think we'll keep him off of Ao. Hmm. One of those vortex sucks too. That shuts down their whole next turn. Yeah, it's got to be AO. I have got new moves to teach you. We've got to 
get in this fight. I mean, if they can get rid of AO, fine, but we can pretty much take out most of their stuff in here. GG's. They did not have Emperor. <laughs> okay. Okay, opponent goes first. Uh, yeah, we'll actually keep this. Yeah, we'll keep it. That's fine. Ugh. Okay, we're gonna need that probably to blow somebody up. Sure. If we can get out ahead of it, we're fine. If if we can get out ahead of it. So we need to take their lightning strikes. We need to take their play with fire. So they're going to spin it on our guys. And we got to do it. You know their fans are butts about it. If they've got the burn, we got to take it. With the farm hand. Okay. gonna be close it's gonna be super super close Let's see what they got hmm definitely gonna need to stop shivin devastator oh lord <clears throat> got double burn we're screwed use the burn on him hmm that's bigger than burn Let's see how this goes Man, if we can get Archangel of Wrath out to gain a little bit of life, that would be nice. So they've got removal, and they want to use it on Paragon. I'm fine. Could, but man, I just don't want to give them the opportunity to get double burn on this. All right, we'll end the turn. Let's see, I'm not so worried about taking one.
All right, GG's, and there we are. Platinum, tier one, mid-range mono white. Heavily inspired by Putin. Definitely check out his video if you haven't. All right, guys, there was a gameplay. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Look, this is Putin's mid-range original list right here. So you can see I borrowed heavily from it. I watched the video. I knew what he was doing, what his thought processes were with a lot of this stuff. And I loved it. I loved it. However, I evolved it more to my taste. And I definitely wanted some planes, Planeswalker removal and stuff like that. And I just wanted a little bit of more recurring card draw because this deck moves so fast. We're thinning it out so well with Restoration of Iganjo and the Ambitious Farmhand that our planes are just coming out of there. So everything's coming off the top. So all we need is the lands to cast stuff. So what are we running out of? Cards in hand. And that's why I built this monstrosity. Let's go ahead and hit that transition. All right, guys, so here's what I came up with, and it's kind of where it's evolved to right now. It doesn't mean I won't change it up again. One thing I really liked utilizing that I don't have in here right now is the uh, veteran, the life gain off of it, and the abs and, and the chance that we can bring it back from the graveyard at its disturbed cost and have life gain with uh, our creatures getting destroyed, which they do often with all the removal in the game. Um, another thing that we tried, which was suggested by Carl, a longtime supporter of the channel stuff, and I loved was Invoke Justice. But the number one meta deck in the game right now carries Graveyard Trespasser. So it hits our big bombs that we usually want to get back with Invoke Justice, and it usually stabilizes out our graveyard. Uh, well, not stabilizes, disrupts our graveyard. Uh, apologies for that. And then plus, the honest truth is, every once in a while, we do have to pull the trigger on Farewell. and We do have to exile graveyards because we can rebuild our hand that fast that we can actually just demolish the board state and reset everything. And usually we can build faster than our opponent can. So with that, we have our removal packages in Faithful Absence and Farewell just to help us with the Planeswalker and Creature removals. I hate giving the clue token, but this is the Planeswalker removal that we're using. Uh, the reason being because Farewell doesn't hit it, but Farewell hits everything else, which can help us stabilize the game from there. Our card draw package is going off of Reckon or Bank Buster and Spirited Companion. Both can be brought back with the second level of restoration of Iganjo. Iganjo is helping us thin out our deck by pulling a planes off of its level one, and then it becomes a 3 4 with Vigilance. And every time it attacks or blocks, it creates a 1 1 spirit creature token, which is great. Wedding Announcement can help us draw as well if we attack with two or more creatures, but if we don't, we're creating 1 1 humans and going wide. And then, of course, when it gets three counters, it flips, and our creatures get plus one plus one. We also have Ambitious Farmhand Breathe, uh, <laughs> which is a 1-1. One, one. When it comes into the battlefield, we get to go get a planes. We get to put it in our, into our hand. So we're ramping fairly fast. We're not really ramping. We can a little bit off of restora uh, Restoration of the Ganjo, or if we hit the third trigger on Reckon or Bank Buster and create the treasure token. However, we're not really having mana problems because we're thinning out our deck. The thing we're having problems with is keeping our hands full, which is why we put the draw cards in here. Because once we thin out so far, all we're pulling is good stuff off the top. However, one thing you do need to utilize if you uh, decide to use this deck, you need to get used to using the Coven ability off of Farmhand because there were a lot of games where it saved me. And that's when you've got three creatures with three different power types. So when you do that, you can attack in with a 1-1. One, one, and if your opponent's not reading this card and they block with like a 2-2, two, two, then you can flip this up for its Coven ability at instant speed and make it a 3-3 three, three with lifelink and then destroy the opponent. So kind of a combat trick. Or if they're going to block up with a Shieldred, knowing that you'll probably flip it to a 3-3, three, three, you flip it to a 3-3, three, three, you hit Shieldred with one of the seats of a Ganjo. There's all kinds of stuff going on here, guys. Uh, you can also do a, like if they crew up a Reckon or Bank Buster to block it, you can flash in the Emperor and give it a plus one, plus one at first strike. So there's tons of combat tricks going on in this deck. Uh, Anointed Peacekeeper is all right. It's not as good as Spellbinder, but it's a 3-3 with Vigilance, which is nothing to laugh at. I mean, 3-3 with Vigilance will kind of slow up some things. Uh, the good thing I like about it is, is it can stave off a threat for a while. So instead of Spellbinders picking one card and exiling it from your opponent's hand and they got to cast it for more, this you can pick a name of a particular spell and it costs two more to cast that spell. So we're holding off stuff like Invoke Despairs or uh, if they've got three uh, Graveyard Trespassers in hand and they've only got like three mana on the board, then we call out Graveyard Trespasser. You just utilize it however you need with whatever you see from your opponent's hand if you get this thing to stick on the field and actually get to choose something. If it's not, you know, countered. Um, another one is Archangel of, uh, Archangel of Wrath. I haven't used this yet, but this made me utilize it. And I love this card. I love this card. It's a 3-4. It's two colorless, two white. It comes in. It's got a kicker of 
swamp and a kicker of a mountain. You can kick it once or you can kick it twice. If you kick it once, you do two damage to creature, planeswalker, or player, and then you gain that much life. If you kick it twice, you can do split damage of two and two, or you can do double damage of four to something, and you gain four life. Uh, it's a great card, man. I love this card. Way more utility than I was expecting out of this. Uh, another one is Sarah Paragon. I would love to get this to four, but I don't think we can. I think the way the deck curves out, I think it's pretty smooth right where it's at. And we seem to pull this when we really need it. It's flying. It's three, four. And then once uh, during each of your turns, you may play a land card from your graveyard or a card of three mana value or less permanent. And then when that permanent leaves the field, you exile it and you gain two life. Great card, especially if we're not exiling our graveyards or we're not running into graveyard trespassers. AO the Dawn Sky fits perfectly at home here, which I'm really glad to see that we actually get to utilize AO more because it's a great card. We just didn't have a package that really fit in. Last season was just mono white aggro, straight aggro. It didn't really want to make it to turn five, so AO wasn't a slot in there. Um, but this works really well in here. It's Flying Vigilance, 5-4, and then when it dies, you've got two choices. You can look at the top seven of your cards, and you can uh, put a combined... A uh, total of four mana value of permanence onto the battlefield, non-land permanence. Or you can do its other ability, which is put two plus one plus one counters on all your creatures. And we can go really wide, so that two plus one plus one counters can really help us just close out the game uh, if we're built up that way. And But if we're not, it can help us get a stuff back on the field, and everything that we've got is utility that we want to utilize. We have two Sanctuary Wardens in here, which is a 5-5. I think everybody knows this card by now. It is flying. When it enters the battlefield, it has two shield counters on it. And when it enters the battlefield and then when it attacks, you can remove a counter from a Planeswalker or a creature, soul or, or Sanctuary Warden or anything else. Um, and if you do so, you draw a card and you create a 1-1 uh, green-white citizen token. Uh, great card, and the shield counters really help us keep it in play, unless somebody's got a meat hook massacre and they're up to seven mana. But usually by the time they're up to seven mana, we've hit them twice with this thing because we are pulling mana out of this deck at a flood rate. Uh, we got three Wandering Emperors in here, which we can sneak in and exile creatures. We can sneak in and combat trick plus one plus ones and first strikes on our creatures. We can also negative one and do a create a two two white samurai with vigilance. Everybody knows Wandering Emperor right now. It's arguably with Liliana the best planeswalker. You can argue either way, just depending on what your play styles are. This card's going to be around for a while. We're not going to see this thing disappear until next September. Uh, we got two Elspeth of Resplendence in here. Great card. Three colorless, two whites. Uh, it's a little costly, but it's a great card, especially with how we're going to utilize it. You got the plus one on it. You can choose up to one target creature, put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and then you can give that creature either flying, first strike, lifelink, or vigilance. Now, what I usually do in most situations is I give it uh, first strike. So most of our creatures can reach four toughness real easy with that plus one, plus one. And the real thing, the, the biggest thing that I'm trying to get off the board most of the time that I run into are graveyard trespassers. And that four, four and first strike just stalls out a graveyard trespasser like no other. And we've got enough vigilance creatures going on in here that they usually just don't tap out. You also have to watch out for other emperors from your opponents as well with that uh, tapping out and getting exiled. So be careful with what you're doing when you're attacking your opponent. However, the plus one ability is really what we're uh, utilizing here. Once in a while, we have to use the negative three where we look at the top seven cards of our library and then we can put a permanent card with mana value three or less from among them onto the battlefield with a shield counter on it and then the rest on the bottom of our library in random order. And then the negative seven is create five, three, three white angel creature tokens with flying guys. That's the package. Our lands. We have four Sundown pass four cave of Coilos, um, 12 planes, and then four seat of the, uh, seat of the empire. Um, the cave and this pass are here to help us kick off, uh, archangel or archangel of wrath when it comes in and gain some life. Uh, not necessary, though. It's got flying. It's got lifelink. It can evade a lot of decks right now. 
And then, of course, Seat of the Empires to help us. You can only have one in play at a time for mana. You can do the tap and cast and then put another one in play. Get rid of the tapped one and leave that one open if you have to. But more often than not, we're putting one in play and we're using the other three as combat tricks to remove attacking or blocking creatures. With that, guys, there it is. My version of Mono White Midrange. But again, a huge thank you to uh, Putin and a huge shout out. I will definitely leave a link to his video below. Please stop in, hit a thumbs up, drop an ABC algorithm boosting comment, even if it's just ABC. Uh, helps out content creators a great deal. It was a great deck list. I have to give credit where credit's due, but we are absolutely destroying the meta with this. 71%, guys. 71% through platinum. I don't show you my losses because I'm a big baby, but I do lose. So we're 25 and 10 with this deck list. Uh, take it for what it is, but it is brilliant. And if you can get to turn four or five, it's actually hard to lose the game. It really is, unless you're on stream. And you can go back and watch that to see what I'm talking about. Please don't. But anyways, with that, guys, stay safe. Be happy and healthy. Have a great weekend. Again, much love. Take care. We'll see you next time. Peace. Bye-bye, guys.